Ooh, welcome back to Stoneblock. And you'll see my, my floor starting to change. I haven't done the whole room yet, but I'm starting to do this. Why? Well, this white concrete has one big advantage. Here's me on normal stone. Here's me on white concrete. Yep. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. And we've got much higher speed. Okay, so you may already notice I've made some other changes. These are here, uh, just sort of a reminder for me to speed this up, really. But yes, it does work if you use an acceleration one. Thank you for someone telling me that. So if I right click on this, you'll see it immediately goes to full. And then it's really down to how fast this harvester then checks before actually, you know, there we go, back up to full. So um, will, this, will this acceleration one work with a mechanical user or has it been disabled? Uh, using the machine has been disabled in config. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I did get this working a lot faster. You'll see this is actually visibly growing. Um, see, there it goes. The way it did that, if we just pop down here for a second, is underneath the nether star crux, I placed 64 growth accelerators. They're from Mystic Agriculture, Mystical Agriculture. Um, in fact, let's just look. Growth, growth accelerators fairly cheap just a diamond and then a block of inferior and inferior we've got tons of so going straight down there is a line of 64 of these <laughs> i promise they are going straight down so uh yes i have got that for now and we just fill this in with cobblestone for now uh, oops forgot to do one other block right there and then there we go, some more concrete. So I can just fill this rest of this in with more concrete. Okay, so that is actually going pretty well. And here I've just got a very simple setup. It's all in green, so there is no extra channels going on, but there is a filter. So in here, this filter, I've got the, so it'll only take the nether stars and this stuff. It's like special bone meal. Um, we'll come back to that another time, but it's just occasional drop that happens with mystical agri ag agriculture or agroditions, whichever it is. Out of here, and no, nothing special, just extract everything, which is because it's the harvester. And then in this one, it'll only accept in the filter, um, sorry, it will accept everything apart from nether stars and that special bone meal. So once it goes in here, we've got two recipes in the crafter and it automatically makes nether stars. So our system never sees anything other than nether stars and that bone meal stuff. Uh, let me just see if it's uh, switchable under bone. Yeah, there it is. So fertilized essence is what it calls. Bone meal that works on resource crops, but because we don't have enough of it, I just ignore it. Okay. Now, now the stars were up to 70, so it just increased just then. And we were on 65 when I started this game up. So, you know, the nether stars are coming in at a, but not a rate of knots, but they're coming in reasonably well. And of course, uh, if I wanted more, then we'd have to automate these growth crystals. But I've just left them there so that I don't forget. I did also get a couple of suggestions from people saying uh, there was the watch of flowing time. Now, this is also something we can make, but it requires dark matter. And that's some, not something we have yet. There's also a dark matter pedestal. Which is pretty much blocks of dark matter, which is even... <laughs> She's nine, oh, sorry, not nine, four each of Dark Matter, which is Eternalis, which is Mobius, and uh, which is the Philosopher's Stone, which needs us to fight the Ender Dragon, and yeah, yeah, lots of stuff to actually get on with. So that's not going to be an option early game. It is going to be later on. However, you know, we do have renewable Nether Star growth now, so that's a good point to get on with what I wanted to build this episode. So the first thing I want to build is something that will take care of various uh, things in my inventory that are not full um, in terms of, uh, what's, the, what's the word? Um, durability. That's the word I was trying to think of. So we wanted something that will repair things. And that is where the repair tablet comes in. There, we've already got nether stars now. I think I made some redstone ingots and we needed three grass here. So I went hunting for those uh, in the nether. So... Um, Yep, yeah, we've now got a repair tablet. And uh, that um, re repairs one, restores one durability every X seconds. It doesn't say how long X particularly is, but I will assume, oh, there it is. Uh, did that actually change? I think it did. 
Yep, it's actually repairing things good. And it's doing them in a certain order. I'm not sure what the order is, but that's passively working. So I don't need to worry about that anymore. Good. Put that there. Fine. With that built, then we need to think about some other stuff. I'd like some upgrades. And I think I'd like to upgrade this armor away from Obsidian, which is just a very, very basic form of armor. The Dark Boots are fine for Jump 2, but we have Flight, so I don't necessarily need Jump 2. Uh, we don't need Apiris just yet or Empowered. So what I thought is, oh, let's take a look at that Supremium stuff. So the stuff we've been gathering slowly. I've got 59 there. How many more have I got in here? I've got another 23. Let's just grab you. Uh, this isn't making Insanium at the moment, is it? Uh, no, just up to Draconium ingots. I'm not actually uh, automatically doing Insanium. Fine, so Supremium, uh, su Supremium Armor. Uh, there we go. So we've got four pieces, as you might expect, and they all contain this Armor Core. The Armor Core takes Wither Skeleton Skulls and Nether Stars and Supremium Essence, but also needs us to craft a Armor Core of the lower tier. So each one of those needs one, so we're going to need four of these cores, which means I'm going to need four of these. Oh, mm, that's not good. What can I not make? Base, base essence. Okay, four of those. And let's go back down through this. Uh, ooh, do I not have enough of the base essence? Oh, I guess I don't. Okay, Essence. We want to make sure we have enough of that, so let's just grab some of you and craft it down. We're also going to craft up some of the blue kind, but, you know, we can come back to that Essence. Uh, there we go. All right, and I'm going to continue crafting this up until we get to that top tier. And here we are in the final stage of making the ingot part of it, um, or the armor that is. So you start with uh, the basic essences again, your, your way up through the ingots. Um, we're going to want 20 of them, I think. I'm not sure if we need any more than that, but uh, that takes an awful lot of the essence. However, uh, we should get the ingots. Now, I think I may have skipped, unfortunately, the, the quest there, because unless you take them back out of a 2 yeah, it doesn't recognize that you've made the next tier. So I may have to make one further ingot um, with those. So just to show you on that one, um, if we just look at Supremium ingot, there we go. Uh, if I just go down through these, you'll see we need to make one of these and then we can just work our way up through those tiers, just crafting the next thing along. And that will be quite quick. You just bring them into your inventory and we should get a quest complete. Yeah, there we go. And then through the rest of the, uh, the upgrades. So green and um, I'm going to need to get some more of those. Yeah, orange. Uh, we should get blue next. There we go. And finally, and expensively, we need to make the uh, Supremium. There we go. Is that all the quests done? Quests. Yeah, so we're only on to the Insanium ingots, and that requires us to... Well, we need to make the tier cra six crafting seed as well, but uh, you get the idea. And I'm just going to set this back onto internal. And then I can put the... Infusion stone back in here. Oh no, some, for some reason that one of these has got an external. Why would you be? Why are you throwing away my <laughs> my infusion stone every time? Internal, apply. Uh, okay. Now it's throwing it into the external slot, which is then being sent into here. So I just need to make sure I take that back out again. And then we will hopefully have it stay this time. Yeah, there it goes. So I'll just put the rest of them in here and they'll go back into Supremium as we expect. So we've now got four armor cores and we've got our Supremium ingots so we can put them all back into the system and we can basically craft ourselves the Supremium armor. So we want the helm. And there we go. We want the chest plate. Was there another chest plate there? Or is that just the upgrade? 
electric jetpack attached, but the flight bonus, the, the set bonus is flight anyway, I think, so we don't need that. Leggings and the boots. And we've got one spare. So I've got a set of four pieces of armor. First of all, I'm going to take off my flying ring just to make sure that we get set bonus. So if I jump, I can double jump, but I can't establish a, uh, a flight. So let's take off our existing boot, uh, stuff, put on the new stuff, and we have flight. And that's a much faster version of, oh, much faster version of flight than I previously had. Okay, so the angel ring can go away, and so can our old armor. Cool, so we've now got a new set of armor, and we don't have any charms yet. Look, we have got charms. Charm. Charm. Uh, these are the charms, I assume. Um, what mod are these from? Mystical. So, yeah, those will be the charms. And we've got a number of options. Night vision might be useful. But we need to make uh, superior essence of blocks. And they're just made from superior essence, which is fine. And they make the blank charms. And I want to see what charms I can actually apply to the various pieces of armor. Let me look through them. And we'll come back so that you're not hearing me read things out or looking things up on the wiki. One second. Okay, so there is a few here that I actually want. Um, there is a couple that only have one sort of armor piece they can be applied to. One is night vision, but I, because I generally light things up for you guys, I generally don't need night vision. I mean, if we go into the deep dark, what I could do is make an alternate helm with night vision on. But even in the deep dark, if you go in there without light sources, you're going to have a bad time. So I'm going to leave that one out. The other one is the speed on the leggings. Now, I think I am going to actually make that. And that should let me uh, fit on a few other effects. So if we want speed, we're going to need a blank charm. And they require a block of superior essence. So I'm going to need... Um, well, I'm going to need four of those, and I'm going to run out probably pretty soon. Let's just have a look. Uh, whoops. Uh, let me just get that one blank charm, actually. Um, yeah, so I'm going to need three more. How many? Uh, well, we'll see how many. <laughs> I've got the blank charm. I just want to make the speed charm. Okay. Okay. And increases your movement speed. Now, I do already have the speed charm here from Cyclic. If they're applying the same effect, that means I can get rid of that out of my inventory. Also, you'll see I have a fire charm here for fire protection. Again, I can get rid of that out of my inventory. Antidote is one of the other charms you can make out of these, but um, because I'm not intending to, I may as well keep that in my inventory. And finally, Void is saves you from falling into the void if you dig down. In my case... Um, well, I have flight now, so I could keep both of those in my inventory and get rid of these two, depending on how these charms turn out. So let's just check out how many essences I have left. Ten. Um, yes, that's probably not going to go too far, but we have made the, the blocks at least, so we can get to that. I don't care for jump boost, that is also only a slot a specific thing for boots, because we have flight, so I don't need to worry about it. I am going to worry about fire resistance. And I'm missing a few bits and pieces. I'm going to need more Prosperity Shards. Interesting. Do I have more Prosperity Shards already? Let's go and take a quick look down here. And I think they can come, will come out of Prosperity Blocks, maybe? Um, well, I guess I've got enough for one more. Um, I think they're just random drop chance, so I may have to put a th quite a few more of this dust through. Uh, 32 stacks, so this is now full. Uh, let's just get as many of those as we can. And let's just put them through the, uh, the sifter. Okay, so I've got enough for maybe another charm. And what should we do? We're going to probably want absorption and... Well, we're going to go for Absorption, Fire Resistance, and Resistance. And I've got the Speed one already, so it's whichever ones of those are going to be best. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need more of those shards. Is there any way to make Prosperity shards that... Uh, let's just go for Charm again. And go back through for Fire Resistance. Uh, is there any way to make these... Let's see. Uh, sand... 
So it's only gotten from sand. So assuming all that dust is probably not going to help. Yeah, it's only via sand. But it is an 8% drop chance. So if we get lots of sand and we should cut that uh, machine off back there, we should be okay. Uh, unless we can get it from an ore. Where's the prosperity ore come from? Avoid world generation. Okay, we're going to have to sieve sand. That's, that's not a problem. As long as we know, it's the main part. And uh, we can choose fire resistance, resistance, or absorption. Let's look at absorption. That's golden apples. Uh, I'm not sure how much gold I've got. Let's look at fire. I always tend to just fall into stuff like that. Uh, we need some magma creams, which isn't hard to make. Okay, and then we've got fire resistance and speed. We now have to we'll look at uh, or consider, and this is where things get even more expensive again, how we can actually attach those to armor. So if we go back to charms, let's say we want to attach the speed to something. We're going to want prosperity shards, we're going to go into tinkering table, and we're going to want four supremium essences. Eek. Okay, so <laughs> tinkering table, what do you take? We take need inferior and go oh, no. This is going to take <laughs> I'm going to have to make more sand. I'm going to need to make to craft uh, those up into the uh, the next tier up, which isn't going to be expensive. It's just that uh, I don't have the extra resources right now. Um, let's grab some of you. And yeah, I'm going to need to quickly grab some more sand and we'll go and sift it. Back in a second. That didn't take long at all because they were very really common drops. So we need this tinkering table now, which we've made with those ingots I just crafted. And I guess we can just put this down somewhere. Let's put it near this machine. Then uh, it's uh, near to where we get the resources for it. And now we're going to need the bits and pieces. So we're going to need to grab our charm, um, some more prosperity shards, some supreme essence. And we're going to need four of those supreme essence per charm. I've got two at the moment, so we're going to have to wait for that to finish. I'm just going to pop down here, grab some cooked apples, and then let's see how many more we've got. Uh, five blocks, which is 45 prosperity shards, which is more than enough. So we just need now the other essence, and we can get that going. Thankfully, I've got some essence in the system, but just the blue tier of essence. And we can use that to grab enough for two sets. Uh, so that's charm and fire. Um, since our feet will impact the ground first, uh, why don't we assume that we're going to put the fire resistance on those and we have to put the uh, the speed on the leggings. We don't have a choice for that. So uh, oh, cat shift click in. OK, fine. And is it just the same recipe for all of them? Let's give this a go. Uh, yeah, so speed. And let's just grab three of you. Fire. Fire resistance. Okay, fire resistance. You can see the effect. And speed, you can't. But if we just turn... Let's actually turn you off first of all. So... Um, Seems fine. Turn this on. Can't tell much of a difference. No, seems to be fine. So it could be overlapping. If it overlaps, we can get rid of it. Fire charm, fire protection, we can get rid of you while carrying them. Uh, this also cures poison and wither. Okay, so we don't need wither at all. Fine, get rid of you. Uh, ring of magnetism I want to keep, of course, and I don't have the flying ring anymore. So we do have space for some more baubles. If anyone wants to suggest baubles that will add extra effects that are going to be useful, um, yeah, feel free, actually. And I'll just put my magnetism ring back on. And why don't we just go and have a check of how good this fire resistance is. So, um, uh, do I have a bucket? I do have a bucket, but of which water? I want a bucket, regular bucket, please. And 
you will do. And let's go and stand in a bit of lava. Let's uh, see how much damage this armor takes. And of course, we've got the repair talisman or what it was called, repair tablet. So that will recover just fine. So let's just grab some of you and uh, step into a little area. All right, so uh, we have 10 hearts, 15 hearts, and interesting. Oh, no, I, did, I can't actually get in. Complete fire resistance. None of this is taking any durability damage. Um, well, I guess we're swimming in lava now, guys. Yeah, toasty in here, though. Uh, I like I like it when it gets uh, a little bit uh, overpowered. There's there's nothing wrong with being overpowered in this game, honestly. <laughs> there really isn't. Okay, so we've got armor that can give us flight that is pretty fast. Yeah, I am much much happier with this. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty good. Now we don't necessarily need this setup anymore. But I'm gonna leave it here. Um, it generates another star occasionally. Not that's going to be too much of a problem, but I don't know. Maybe you reuse that space. And we've still got our, our mob farm going up here. Um, is there, what have we got in here? Anything extra good? Just lots and lots of coal. We're going to need the coal later, so I may as well take all of that. And as you can see, lots of miscellaneous stuff. And occasionally when we get something with an enchantment on it, I just take it out of there. There we got something there. And put it into here. Because we can rip the enchantments off and apply them to other things. Uh, so block reach, uh, protection one, fire protection one we don't need. Soulbound is very useful. Um, and soulbound again. Yeah, the rest, not so much. Just a quick update on our last episode. Uh, I did talk about witherproof blocks, and I did use these, the reinforced obsidian ones. There is a cheaper one, however, and I uh, missed it, and I did get a comment about it. Down here from Tiny Progressions, there is this version. Okay, it takes up iron bars and obsidian and nothing else. Much, much cheaper, so easier to actually make. Uh, just thought I'd mention it, even though I've already created these now. <laughs> so I guess I took the pain. Hopefully you will only be doing it now, so you will hopefully do some savings. Uh, what I actually wanted to make is uh, some oh, redstone. Yeah, don't worry about that. what that is. Uh, some electrical steel, that's just steel and silicon in an induction smelter, so there's no big problem there. And we're going to use it to make a power monitor and the decoration block. No, I just want a regular one. Uh, we're going to need to make some uh, nuggets, first of all. That won't be terribly hard. And then I need to make a conduit probe, which needs me to make a Yeta wrench. Let's make another one. I've already got one in my backpack, but uh, that's not what I want to do. And there we get a power monitor. Now, power monitors, if I remember rightly, you can set them up so that they emit a redstone signal when we get to a certain level of whatever they're, they're really monitoring. So let's just take uh, you out for a second and let me just see if they can pass through. Um, let's take a look. Emit signal when storage is less than 75% full. Stop when the storage is greater than or equal to 99% full. Okay, so right now it shouldn't be emitting. Uh, hang on. So that's the machine buffers. And the buffers are on this side, I think. So it's probably looking at uh, this. Maybe? Yeah. And conduit storage, capacitor bank storage. Hmm. Are you actually monitoring this, though? You've got 3 million. What happens if I just sort of cripple this a little bit? In the name of science, and grab both of you. Is there one this back here as well? Probably is. Yep. Don't think there's one anywhere. Oh, there's one at the top. Let's pop you off as well. All right. So now that should be depleting with nothing else coming in. And now we can test this just by then saying, well, Emit signal and storage is less than, uh, let's say, 98% full. Okay, so if that's working, that should actually be emitting a signal already. So let's just, um, I'm not sure if it's from the back or if it's from any particular side, just so that I keep it clear of the rest of the cabling. Let's just put a, a 
redstone circuit there. Um, output, strong signal. Yeah, that's not working at the moment, is it? Okay, I need to remember the positioning of this stuff. May have to go next to it. Let's just grab that for a second. And pop you in place right there. No conduit network attached. Needs to be attached to a conduit network to read data from. Fine. Let's move it one up then. One, oops. One, two. And on top. There we go. So now it's looking at the capacitor bank. So it should be able to emit a signal, which should mean if I put uh, some redstone cable right here, uh, we should be getting a signal if that's the case. Let's just grab that and input output signal on red. Strong signal. Get rid of you. And do I need to reset this back up again? Nope, that's fine. That should be emitting a signal now because it's, uh, it's less than that volume. OK, so then down here, before I just combine all these cables, I just knock out the, the light in here. Yeah, let's put that back. There we go. If we had that, and it will be combined once I get this all done, but if we had this going down the back here, and oh, my game's frozen, um, it's in parallel. Will you receive, uh, or will you only receive a signal on that block, I wonder? Okay, so you're set to high, so it should only start running once the redstone signal turns on. And there it is, it's actually working. It's just a little bit backwards in how that it works. Um, just look at the arrows, not the input-output thing. I would assume the output meant output from that block. No, no, it means <laughs> this is the input to the network of that signal. So if you say input to red and output to red, you don't necessarily need a strong signal in this case. Uh, this is basically going to tell all of this to turn on once this drops in value. So you see now it's actually charging back up and we're no longer using these spectre calls. Now I'm going to put these spectre calls back on. They're 120 hour per tick, uh, but I want this as a completely independent mechanism. So let's just, whoops, I guess it's turned back off again because I've turned the strong signal off. I should just get the Yeta wrench out for this. But I'll just put them on the same um, same block space. There we go. And you've stayed configured. So I can now set this back to something reasonable like 75. And that's nice, nice and set up, I think. I don't have to do anything else except put these back. That'll give, it, that'll give us some um, store, well, not storage, some power. There we go. So that should nicely be increasing. And I can put everything else back. Now, you might be wondering why I'm bringing you up that auto-controlling power setup, especially in the episode where we're making nice, you know, well, overpowered armor. Uh, the main reason I'm bringing that up is because the next thing we're going to get to is maybe some kind of better weaponry and stuff, or maybe even some other armor that we could think about. You know, it's all up to us at this point. And uh, to do that, we're going to need a fusion crafting process. Now, fusion crafting is new since I last played, and it requires a few bits and pieces. Uh, one is lapis. Let's just get to lapis sorted out. Uh, and we're going to need to make some blocks of lapis. So let's just take five, well, let's take 10 or something, close to 10. Fusion crafting. It is Draconic Evolution's advanced crafting process. So you'll see there's a Draconic cores, which already have diamonds, etc. And we could easily make the crafting core. There are also a series of injectors. Now, the injectors, again, seem to be fairly straightforward. You can make one of those. In fact, we're probably going to make... Well, <laughs> I guess I'm going to make four. Uh, I'm going to need some cobble. <laughs> let's just get some cobble out of here, and let's just... Let's just get craft a stack in our ultimate furnace. There we go, full stack. Love this furnace. And we can craft more injectors. Now, the maximum number of injectors you're going to need is 10. 
However, each injector needs to be used to craft the next tier of injector. So if I look at the next one up, the Wyvern one, it requires us to take the basic one and then put it with injectors all around. And it needs eight to get to the next tier. And then we use that one to get to the next tier, which needs seven, uh, third tier, etc. So what I think we want to do is uh, lay out um, eight and then we can sort of cycle them. And by cycle them, I mean basically lay out eight, put the ninth in, upgrade it, swap it with one of the eight, etc., and keep on going until they're all upgraded. So uh, we're going to want, um, well, <laughs> lots. So let's just make, nine, let's just make nine for now, okay? Each of these are going to need quite a lot of RF to actually make those. So to make the next tier up, for instance, 256,000 RF. Tier up after that, nearly 2 million. Tier up after that, 48 million RF. So each one of those little attachments that I put on that capacitor can do 128 RF per tick. So if I had five, that's, uh, that's five, uh, well, it's more like 600 RF per tick or just over. So 600... <laughs> 48 million divided by 600 is still a very large number of set of ticks, <laughs> okay? Uh, I'm not going to work it out now, but you can if you like and put a comment below. Uh, suffice it to say, that's not going to be enough, even with that power boost, but, um, or at least to, to, to this fast, we're going to have to get into extreme reactors at some point. Uh, however, uh, we can actually set this up. So to set it up, it, it's not going to be too much of a problem. And let's just look at... Um, why is it does it take wyvern cores we don't thankfully we don't need to do fusion crafting to make wyvern cores uh it'll only be what we're using wyvern cores for that may take fusion crafting so we don't need it for the draconic energy cores unless the energy cores themselves need it no awakened draconium doesn't um in fact, let's look at fusion crafting the other way around. Fusion crafting. There you are. So 81 recipes. So to, to basically change the bows um, from one tier to the next, you're going to need it. So that's all the bows, all the swords, uh, the leggings, basically all the armors, you will need it. For all the tools, you'll need it. And um, what are you changing where was it i just went back a little bit uh let's go forward then okay so the draconic flux capacitor that goes up to 640 million 766 million 768 million so it is actually upgrading things as we actually go through um yeah the ultimate thing that I normally want to head towards is the Draconic Staff of Power. And is there anything else other than this? Ah, yep. Yeah. So we can actually get Draconium straight into Awakened Draconium, straight through Fusion Crafting. Now, if you remember how this used to work, you used to have to put this Dragon Heart down, and then you had to throw stuff at it, and then things would just start happening in midair. It was always a little bit odd. But now there is an actual crafting process that's on here. There are all of our tiers of inserters, uh, sorry, uh, injectors, and, ooh, draconic reactor cores. Yeah, the reactor core is dangerous, uh, but it will produce a lot of energy, although 450 million <laughs> to make it. Hmm. So, yeah, we're going to have to get on with doing that. However, ooh, some nice upgrades. Draconium chest, uh, ender energy manipulator, Okay, and upgrades nether stars into awakened cores with awakened draconium ingots, etc. So there's lots and lots and lots of recipes that do this. But the main thing I'm looking at is to see what we need to do to craft various weapons and see how well that does once it's upgraded. Straightforward, I guess, for the, the previous tier, but um, we need to get the fusion crafting for the next. So draconium, we're now up to 200 draconium ingots. I'll just grab you, because we've got that uh, that cloche over here that is actually producing them passively. All right, so to set these up, you can choose anywhere you like. Um, I don't think I have a specific area in mind. 
Uh, so why don't we just go out into the mining world and we're going to need a flux point if we're going to go over there. So let's just grab a point. Um, flux point. I'm always short of bits and pieces for that. So let me just make some more flux cores and make a couple of flux points. Uh, you're going to want some kind of power distribution. And of course, I'm out of energy conduit. So let's just get energy conduit. And let's just get the first tier, although just because that's only maximum outputting of 640 uh, micro I per tick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I give up with these energy units. I wish they <laughs> standardized on one unit. Joules, for example. Joules uh, would be uh, remarkable. And watts, both of those, almost like it's some kind of real thing, uh, would be very useful. Anyway, mining world it is. And yes, it's, I think it's mechanism. It's, it's, a, one, it's certainly one of them that actually uses proper units. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to cover those. Oh, wh what? Why was... Wh why? <laughs> okay, so we know our armor works. Just as a quick test. Um, there is our wither apparatus. So let's just go over here for a little bit. Not touching you. Not in a million years. No, it's not happening. Um, if you think these are bad, uh, there is one that turns floor to lava. You think it's bad. There is one that TNTs, sprays TNT everywhere and blows things up. You think that's bad? No, there's a nuke. There is one that will take out everything within hundreds of blocks. So please don't touch them. P please, please just don't touch them. <laughs> if you value your base, don't even do it in the same dimension. If you're going to do it, just go hundreds of blocks away and then actually use them and hope you don't die. Uh, so if we're going to do this, we'd set this up. You're just going to put the fusion crafting core block down. You need to have the other blocks around it uh, such that they are one block maximum away from its axes. So if this is an axis, you can only put a block there or there, but it doesn't matter how many you go out. You can go up to like 16 blocks away from it, I think, or 15 or 16. So if we just leave a, a space of two here and then just put um, one, two, oh, you have to put them backwards. Mm. Oh, when I say backwards, facing the direction. So let's leave block space of two and the third one there. Okay, now normally I do a uh, sort of a 12 thing here, but we only need 10. So we probably want to just put six and eight, oh, sorry, three, six, seven, eight. And that makes a neat little arrangement. We've got our ninth there that we can think about upgrading, but we do actually need to supply power to all of these. Okay, so power is relatively straightforward. Yeah, we've got 16, so I'm just going to run uh, power for now. Like this. And like this. Yeah. Why? Why am I always out of power? An energy conduit. One second. And here we go. One, two, three, four. And why don't we just uh, actually just attach this with a single point in the corner. Let's put it right there for now. I'll move this later. I'll probably put it underground. Just select the network. The battery power network should be fine for now. And now we've got to actually start the crafting. So we have uh, an injector. And the injector is going to go in the center. So it goes into the top. Show the recipes we don't need to worry about. And then we've got uh, ingredients. So I'm going to put in a wyvern core. Whoops, a wyvern core. Let's just right click to insert. So, and two, whoops, actually, I didn't want to, I want to split those. Do we actually need to split them? Hmm, not sure. I will actually find out. I'll put the draconian block in. And you can see, yeah, we do actually need to split them, it looks like. And then we just need four diamonds. So, one, two, three, and four. Now this should kick off the crafting, I think, unless we need a particular lever to do so. Uh, unless we need to right click or just press start. There we go, it's charging up. Do I want to be anywhere near this thing? That's the question. 
Uh, that's electrical arcing. I'm not sure. Anyway, are you nearly finished? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure whether I want to be too close to this, but it is a whole lot more impressive than the old way of crafting in Draconic. Uh, so, yeah. Someone's been working on their special effects. This is taking longer than I might expect for a crafting process, mind you, but I guess. Oh, uh, should I really be close to this? Hmm. Done. Okay. Sort of mildly... <laughs> mildly interesting. And why I'm fusion crafting. Okay, there we go. We've got some quests. So why don't we just finish off before we get to even more of that stuff by um, finishing up those quests. Let's see if I get any interesting and overpowered stuff or whether it's more of what we've already seen. At least for me. For some of you, you've been getting comments saying, hey, I found this amazing, awesome stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, um, good. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. <laughs> I have Futurama style tubes I can go around my base with. But enjoy your amazingly overpowered stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it'd be nice if I got something really cool, but uh, yeah, it's random, isn't it? So I can't influence that at all. Uh, there we go. You'll see we're heading out along this line now in the uh, Draconic Quests. And is that everything? Yes, it is for now. Okay, plenty of quests. Let's see what I get. Drum roll, please. So, in the hammer, uh, we've already got one of those. Uh, some stone and some wood. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah, enjoy your, your amazing swords, guys. Uh, draconic cores, I don't mind. Awakened draconian crooks, I definitely like. That means we can then make awakened draconium uh, once we get to that stage with the plants. Um, excuse me. Um, some glowstone. Mm, sort of okay. Uh, overclocker upgrades, upgrade speeds, no, um, no, no, more fertilizer, I guess, last two, definitely not, and see what I mean, you always have these tubes, I can get around my base really easily now, except that I've upgraded my pants, my, my leggings, so yes, uh, all that's going to go away, I'm not going to need, uh, well, very few of that. Let's put it that way. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this episode. We've got quite a bit done. I've got a new set of armor. It's self-repairing now. Uh, I've got more inventory space available. And we've got fusion crafting set up, at least a very basic version. And we can get back to a more advanced version once I get everything else sorted. It, it sort of reminds me very much of the... Um, old magical mods and the way you used to craft those and you had pillars around. Oh, what was the mod called? Thorncraft. Um, yes, you had the Thorncraft pillars around a central uh, location that you did crafting on. And there was always a nightmare to try and place the stuff on the, the outlying um, on the outlying posts. So uh, normally, I guess we could feed, just feed in with regular item conduits, but we just have to make sure they're rationing so there's only one item at once. Anyway, we'll come back to that another time. For now, uh, hopefully enjoy the episode. Lots of overpowered stuff. We're getting further on. And I'll see you next episode for some more stone block. Feel free to like, subscribe, share as you already would. And um, as always, guys, thanks for watching.